This is what castor plant looks like in the farm. It's still fresh, very greeny and still fresh. And eventually it gets to this stage. Now it's all dried and ready to pluck out the seed. As you can see, this is a pod. And from the pod, you only open the pod, these are the seeds that you get from them. And these seeds, it's what you use to make castor oil. Hi beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Tia Girl Chisum. Please don't forget to click that subscribe button as you are watching this video. So guys, this is what castor seed looks like. Some are whitish, while some are brownish, while some are blackish, while some are goldenish. Now this is what castor, or castor seed looks like. And with this castor seed, we'll be making our castor oil. Don't go anywhere. And like I said, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The first step is to fry your castor seeds. Now for you to do that, get your pan or your pot or your so whatever you are going to fry with and then pour your seeds inside them and use and work and stir fry on a low heat maybe 140 degrees or thereabout using your spatula you can use it to keep stirring it now this process is to reduce the toxin called ricin that castor natural castor plant naturally has and what ricin does is that when it gets to some a person's cell it prevents the cell from producing protein and without that protein that the cell is supposed to produce, the cell dies, which might eventually lead to death. So this is most especially for those that might want to consume their castor oil because of the laxative works as. After frying it, you go ahead to spread it on a flat surface as so as for it to cool off. So guys, when frying, please endeavor not to allow it to get this dark because mine got burnt a little. I was a bit distracted. So please endeavor not to get distracted. Let it just be golden brown kind of color. Then after that, when it's all cooled off, you go ahead to blend it. Now, when blending, you add water when blending, enough water to aid in the blending. But if you can't blend, you can go ahead and use mortar and pestle to match it up. That is using just to pound. Yeah, you go ahead to pound. If you cannot blend, you go ahead to pound. And after that pers that, that step, you go ahead and pour it out into your frying pan or your frying pot. Yes, with the water too. Now, as you can see, it is quite thick, but you will need it to be runny. You need it to be runny because for this stage, you'll be cooking it for as long as 40 minutes to one hour that is how long you to cook it to take add water so as to keep it runny because you need it runny for you to cook it that long 40 to one hour you need it to be runny and it will also make extraction easier now castor oil has so many benefits which include stoppage of hair fall it also gives you thicker eyebrows it fades scars it thickens hair it gives you a smooth fit when applied the way it's supposed to apply it. Cellulite gone. When you apply it on your cellulite, some persons claim that it works on cellulite too. That when you apply it on cellulite, it tends to fade your cellulite and also stretch marks. So I'm also saying that it's good for the lips when you apply it on the lips. And also it is very good for constipation. It elevates your constipation. Now, one hour later, this is what it looks like. You can see the oil floating on top. Now, it is ready as it is now. It is ready to be drained. Remember, please don't go and drain immediately so you wouldn't hurt yourself or ruin your strainer or something. Just allow it to cool off before you drain it. And like I said, keep, keep it running so it will be easy for you to extract. Keep it running. Keep making it runny. If it's not runny by the one hour, you can add hot water to make it runny. Now, after it must have cooled off, you go ahead to strain. Now, as I'm doing this, I remember the reason why I like using cheesecloth to strain instead of 
this trainer because at this point now I can't really do all the whole thing. So I went ahead and switched to my cheesecloth. Cheesecloth gave me extraction uh, satisfaction in the sense I would then get to squeeze the way I want to and extract as much as I want to and feel like. So after that, this is what it looks like. I went ahead and pour it in a container that has a lid. A container that has a lid. And this I'll be storing inside the freezer. I'm just ignore the messy thing. It's, I think it's the bowl that did it. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and store this in the freezer for like four hours or thereabouts. Now, after four hours, this is what it's like. So um, I use a spoon. Using a spoon, I remove the oil. The oil is the one that you see at the top. That black, this black thing, that's the oil. That's where the oil is. The rest, after extracting, removing the oil, you can trash the rest. You don't need the rest anymore. That oil at the top there is what you need. And after extracting it, because there is some water in it, I went ahead to put it in my frying pan. And then I allow it, I will allow the pan and the fire to dry, dry, out, the, dry out the water. After some seconds, this is what it looks like. And this is your oil. Now what you have to do is turn off the heat and allow it to cool off as usual. And after cooling off, I went ahead to put it in my container. And there it is, my castor oil is ready. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Just so you know, this video is a video request for Adugo. Adugo, here is your video. I hope you enjoyed it.